hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that too. Pork broccoli. Snowflake. Hail Baphomet. Thank you guys for listening. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Thank you for downloading and listening. My name is Jimmy Putnam, your host. With me, as always, is co-host Joshua Vossler. Hi, everybody. And Will Doherty. I'm uh, taking uh, applications for for catchphrases. I feel like your catchphrase wouldn't be as much of a phrase as just some sort of sound. Yeah. <laughs> noise. Right. Like, right. Yeah, just like a dad sigh. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. <sighs> <laughs> That'll really get people excited to listen to you. We have a new guest this week. She is my friend. She is a musician and comedian, Ariel Senna, everybody. Ariel Senna, how are you doing? Ah, doing well. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Ariel, the most notable thing about you, it, well, there's a couple things, but number one, the first thing that comes to my mind, one of the very, very, very few people who's ever come to my house that my cat likes. Uh, it, it was it, it was shocking, uh, but my cat immediately walked up to you, let you pet him, and then walked away without attacking you or hissing at you or snarling or anything like that. Did that make you feel special? Did you know how special that was at the time? No, but you told me pretty promptly. And right, right. Made me feel good. It was very exciting to me. Do you um, do you have a history of being able to like <laughs> speak to the animals, I'm whether pretty, yeah, like emotionally or in like a literal like Eliza Thornberry sort of way? Fun fact: I went to school with a kid named Donnie, whose uncle was the creator of the Wild Thornberries, <laughs> <laughs> and created the character Donnie Thorn Thornberry after this guy. What is the Wild Thornberries? Oh, the that... Wild Thornberries is a Nickelodeon cartoon. Oh, okay. But no, I mean, I've always been good with animals. I think nice. some people just kind of give off that like trustworthy animal vibe. Have that... you have you ever been bitten by an animal? Ooh, no. I got stung by a wasp one time. That counts. Mm. <laughs> that counts. Wasps <laughs> hate you so much. <laughs> well, no, yeah, that's the downside White of anglo saxon yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, them too. But uh, no, that's the downside I think of being able to like speak with the animals is like the really angry, hateful animals are even more angry at you then because they're like, right. you should know better. The fact that you're good at animals reminds me of uh, good at animals. Huh? You just said I'm good at animals. Oh, good at animals. I, I don't know. Can you be good at animals? I mean, that is how you phrased it on your mm -hmm. resume. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> good with animals. Here's the thing, like. At, and at work, I'm known to be like somewhat of a medium, so I can channel people's spirit animals. So like everyone at work has a spirit animal because Ooh. because I have channeled it through the universe and dubbed it upon them. Yeah, and this is a, now the, like on the scale of one to ten, one being this is a thing that I'm doing solely as a joke, and ten being like. This is a matter of life and death, and if you mock it even a little bit, I will be offended. We're lo no longer friends. How serious do you take your- It's about your... a seven. Okay, because I have a spirit animal, wow. and you should know it. So I'm testing you right now. Is it a polar bear? Of course. Yeah. This is officially- I probably, probably told you that. This is officially our first gypsy we've ever had on the show. <laughs> now do Will and Josh. Uh, I'm hard to read. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, Am I, I putting you on the spot? You need a to little, be. Do Josh, you need like a candle or something? Well, or? the thing is, all three of you are- our bear types, <laughs> <laughs> right? But we yeah. didn't we didn't ask what kind of gay man we yeah. would be. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, also, a that's the next question, yeah. by the way. Also, bears. Also, bears. <laughs> uh, no, I can see Josh as a sun bear and Will as a brown bear. I see myself as a sack of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Your spirit animal is a tater tot. <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny but it's not me choosing it it's the universe channeling it through me that's very that's very important. Uh, so, oh, okay uh, yeah of course <laughs> okay of course. so i'm a God. as a narcissist uh i have to know 
what does a brown bear mean as opposed to a polar bear as opposed to what was your type of bear sun bear sun I, bear which i am not a sun bear but that's fine <laughs> hey what? you don't two, choose two things. out of three ain't bad you know what i mean you got two out of three he's always a skeptic yeah. One that's, every... right. that's right <laughs> no yeah so what's what does a brown bear mean to me well, that's kind of up to you to figure <laughs> out. Shit. I just see it. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're like, uh, you're like one of those people who has visions of the future. You don't know what they mean. You just see pictures. Yeah. Mm. I, I have some psychic tendencies and I don't like to tell people, especially people like Josh about them because I know you're skeptic. Uh, yeah, I don't believe in magic. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, and I'm, I'm actually probably the, in all honesty, the most, like, it's, I don't consider it a skeptic. Because a skeptic questions the reality of a situation. I just know there's no such thing as psychics. <laughs> so do you... No, do you... I wouldn't say I'm a psychic. I think I have psychic tendencies. It's kind of like the Force. Like, some people right. just exist on... Oh, no. Well, I believe in the Force. This is getting weird. <laughs> right. So do you believe in, like, <laughs> astrology? No. Okay. This only leaves one relevant question. What is your midichlorian count? <laughs> <laughs> is this one of those things where you're just like, I don't know what it is, but I feel something? Yeah. I, I think everyone does, where you... Like, there are certain times where you just feel like something's going to happen, and then it does. Right. That now, happens to me a lot. Right. And it's kind of about how you analyze that. Like, yeah. that happens to everybody, but I always analyze that as like, right, because I'm a person with emotions, and I right. think stuff. That's like, it's like the thing where every time a plane crashes and someone didn't get on it, they go, oh, I knew it was going to go down. Right. And I had this vision of the plane going down. It's like, yeah. Everyone who ever gets on a plane has that thought. It doesn't mean anything. Like, you're not psyched. The thing is, too, people's spirit animals are never just, like, they're always a weird, unique animal. Bull weevil. Right. Nobody's <laughs> nobody's a, a cat, like, cattle. Nobody's a cow. <laughs> or nobody's a... Mary, That's not true. Mary, I know some people that are, like, a like a yellow lab. My wife, Mary, is, is the <laughs> house cat. But, yeah. So. I also have this weird thing where when I meet someone, I see, like, two colors around them. You see an aura? Yeah, kind of. I right. don't know if it's that, but like... You may be having strokes. I might be. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to get too hippy-dippy, but it's already there. But yeah, I mean, like, I think people have kind of colors that they project and you can see them. You mu it must have been really off-putting to meet me and Will and just see black mm -hmm. on black. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You're oh. white and blue. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything to me. It's just what I see. <laughs> this is why I don't tell people about it. It's this. the polar bear's <laughs> natural habitat is mostly white yeah. and blue. Yeah. What's Will's? Okay, so everyone has a base color of either black, brown, or white. <laughs> Will's is black. <laughs> and don't <laughs> And then they have an, an additional color, so like an accent color, and yours is blue. Black and blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to I'm going to choose to interpret that as being uh, oh, right. representative of the way I treat myself I mean, emotionally. I was going to say I'm sorry, Ariel. You're not actually seeing an aura. Like Will's always just been beat up. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> the color of a bruise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ariel, uh, so wait. I want to know my color. I'm, I'm just really curious. I shouldn't, right. have, yeah. I shouldn't have made that joke. I'm so stupid. God. <laughs> you are brown and wait. green. Brown and green. I agree with that. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. <laughs> uh, okay. So I, I'm going to tell you an uncomfortable story, but this is what I was thinking about uh, when you came in, and I just want to see your reaction to this. Okay. You and I met through improv. Uh, you also do comedy. You also play music. We're on an improv team together. I was telling this joke. I mean, it's not really a joke, but it's just kind of a story about how it was like sometimes I label my friends by like the thing about them that I most closely associate them with. Like Annie is my food friend because we just talk about food a lot. Todd Dillon is my fight friend. Like Dusty's my sports friend. And as I was telling this story, you went, oh, which one am I? <laughs> and my first thought was, uh, we don't hang out. Was I supposed to have one? Your first thought was we don't hang out or we're not friends. It was should I have had one for you? Because it never occurred to me that I would. You're, okay. That's that's her though. That's the friend you never hang out and then, with. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, uh, I've been to your home. I've been to your house. <laughs> no, we we are definitely friends, but like we don't just call each other and hang out ever. And I was, and so this is this is the way my brain works. For the next two days, I was like, oh shit, should I have been calling Ariel on Tuesday nights and be like, what are you doing? Is she at home? And like, why didn't Jimmy ever call me? And he calls everybody else and stuff. See, like I internalize all that. As like, I'm being a dick somehow. So what's your reaction to that? 
Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> my, my question is, what what friend do you want to be? Well, I was kind of hoping, like, because I have a lot of hobbies and stuff, and so I was kind of yeah. hoping. And Jimmy's like, "Come, you've seen my band, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah They're yeah. very good. Thanks. Yeah. So I was thinking, like, oh, you're my musical friend. Because we always talk right. about guitars and stuff. Do we? We have. Because I have other friends that, like, I play music with. Well. It's like they would be my music friend. Right. Now, I would love to play music with you and talk about guitars and stuff. Yeah, Ariel, you're applying for this position. You're just not qualified. Yeah, what, I, what, I, what I actually told you is you're my weird hometown connection friend. Yeah, and I think I was like, that's unacceptable. Yeah, you were, you were like, that's a, such a bullshit <laughs> yeah. friend. Like, it doesn't mean anything. But I'm going to tell that story anyways because right. I think it's interesting. Um, so I was at the back line during, I think it was during a storytelling show. In the midst of telling some story, I mentioned that my hometown was Emporia, Kansas. So after that show, you came up and you were like, hey, I have family in Emporia. And I was like, all right, that's that's kind of crazy. Like, that's just a weird connection. But I didn't think much of it. And I was like, the logical next question is, who are they? Not expecting to, like, have any idea. And you said, Jesse and Vonna Nelson. Okay. And I was like... They've lived next door to my parents for 25 years. Like, I've known them most <laughs> almost my whole life. Yeah, it's my aunt and uncle. Right. Which is insane. Like, that's crazy, right? No one's acting like their mind is blown. Well, I already knew well, it. You <laughs> <laughs> I've also already heard this story. Okay, oh. right, right, right. I but haven't, and um, as far as my mind goes on the level of being blown or not, eh. <laughs> Right. It's, well, I mean, it's it's just one of those. It, it's weird because it doesn't happen very often because you know it's How, pretty what, pretty far away. But think of the people who like think of the people who lived next door to your parents when you were in, like a kid, and then imagine like twenty years later, you're friends with their niece, like you don't even know it. I mean, I don't put any like if now, they also wrote a show on Nickelodeon that I used to watch <laughs> as a kid, that would be awesome. <laughs> right. That would right. be amazing. If they had the same spirit animal as me. Yes. Now we're talking. <laughs> right. Right. No. Uh, I don't know. I thought that was pretty impressive. I'm not going to tell that story anymore because I've told it six times and every time I get this reaction, like, oh, yeah. Like, I don't know why I expect people's minds to be I blown. feel like you could tell it still. Just shorten it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One time I met this person that knew somebody. It's really I, that I suck at telling <laughs> stories is what you're saying. Okay. That's good. <laughs> One time I knew this person you don't know who knew these other people that you also mm. don't know. <laughs> Ariel, you are now my makes me feel bad about myself friend. <laughs> yes. I will take it. <laughs> um, in, in the course of this story happening, when we were in that same room, I believe Annie Hildebrand, friend of the show, friend of me, said that you were her good at everything friend Aww. because you do music Com and you're very talented, you do comedy, you're very funny, you do improv, you do stand-up. How did you get involved in improv and comedy? Through Annie, actually. She and I worked together, and we were roommates for a while, and best gal pals. So I saw her start to do open mics, and then shortly after she started. It's kind of one of those things where it's like not as intimidating when you see someone you know do it. Right, right. So yeah. you, you feel like, oh, if someone I know can do it, then I can. And nice. Then, yeah. And uh, like, did you start the bands you're in? We should say the names of them. You're in a one band called A Ferocious Jungle Cat, mm -hmm. which does like a, <clears throat> well, like modern funk, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. And then another band called Ariel and the Argonauts. Mm -hmm. Which is a folk band. Folk band. Right. Yeah. Cool. So, and they feature a lot of the same people, right? They do. So folk band's a four piece, and then we add two to have our funk band. Nice. Yeah. No, I didn't start them. When I moved to Lincoln back in 2012... I put an ad on Craigslist, actually. Yeah. And uh, Will, who's now my uh, bass player, and he's kind of the architect of both bands, uh, hit me up and was like, hey, I, I want to help out local artists. I'll help you record. I'll back you. I won't ever ask you for any money. Uh, what do you say? And this was after getting, like, first responses from, like, weird, like, two big bouncer guys that were like, hey, you want to come play folk music with us in our garage? And... <laughs> They were a hip hop a hip hop act, so right. like I don't think that they'd even heard folk music ever in their life. But right. uh, so some weird responses, and then I was like, "Yeah, well, I'll I'll meet you in the daylight in a public place." And then <laughs> we met and hit it off and became good friends, and then we started yeah we started playing together. Yeah, that's got to be terrifying to just like <laughs> go into oh, yeah. 
That's the most successful relationship that's ever started on Craigslist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. So that's not true. I got my cat on Craigslist. <laughs> oh, and she's pretty cool. I, I like your cat. Well, she, not as much as Ariel's band. We can we yeah. can ask we can have Ariel over there to talk to the cat and see if maybe she has a second opinion. <laughs> yeah. So I'll see what your cat's spirit animal is. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Oh, I hope it's Will. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not actually. Josh is cat, cat is super is, active. Yeah, yeah, and it's super happy. It's definitely not Will. <laughs> yeah. Comedian Dusty Stell, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Oh, am I on live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just about ready to start recording. I just plugged my phone in, so I hit record. Welcome to the show. Oh, hello, Jimmy Curve. <laughs> <Jimmy Carr program. laughs> this is an impromptu Dusty Stell interview. Uh, we didn't have a middle segment, so now you might be it, buddy. Say hello oh. to our say hello to our guest, Ariel Senna. Oh, I was going to have him guess who it was. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, he's. That's how far to the bottom of the barrel you are? You have to get Ariel on there now? <laughs> times Un are hard. Unfortunately, yes. Times are tough. <laughs> well, am, so is there, can everybody hear me talking in like, their headphones and shit right now? Hell yeah. Yes. We got it. Oh, okay. Well, then I will talk to you later. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> I, it sounds like you had some serious shit to discuss. Not serious, but I just had a question for you, and I don't want anybody else to get butthurt about it. Oh, okay. Well, uh, then I'll talk. And, and so I guess I've already kind of given it away. So I'm doing a show in Des Moines on Friday night, and they asked me if I wanted to bring somebody with, and I was going to see if you wanted to go. Absolutely. I'd I would love, love to. to. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, Jimmy? Oh. <laughs> All right. Sorry, they're talking to me. Uh, I, I graciously accept. Okay. And if you couldn't do it, I was going to ask Ariel next. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's God. Cool. Thank Indeed. God I swooped in and took the chance. Well, Dusty, while you're yeah, on it, here. It's the, uh, it's the Bomb Shelter Comedy Showcase at the Beachwood Lounge. It's in a basement. It's pretty. It's really cool. I've done it a few times, and it's been killer every time. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, this show is going to be released the day before that. So if you're uh, all of our Des Moines listeners, come to say it one more time. Yes, everyone, come to the Beachwood Lounge in Des Moines, Iowa, Friday at 9-ish, I think. Good enough. Yeah, it starts at 9. Awesome. I'll be headlining that show like a bow. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. A any any parting comments, Dusty? Well, I mean, Sebastian told me I should ask Joshua if he wanted to go, and I was like, well, come on. Sebastian, <laughs> you need to I'd rather ask Will than that guy. Yeah. No, Sebastian no. loves Joshua. Hey, Dusty. Yeah, for I just... some reason he does. I want you to know, I think it took a lot of character on your part to recognize that you can't follow me. I think that took a lot of strength. <laughs> you know? and I'm... Yeah, I was like, well, I'm not taking Will. <laughs> I don't have to. If, if you guys I don't need... want to have to follow that sadness. Bag of sadness. <laughs> if you guys need a ride up there, can I be your driver at least? <laughs> Fuck. Yes, you can You can drive us up there so we can both drink the whole time. Yes. Thank uh, you, Joshua. So, uh, I was just checking out. Yeah, I'm busy. Sorry. <laughs> I can't make it. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to go, I'm sure you, I mean, you guys can go. I can maybe see about them squeezing one more in if one of you guys wanted to go as well. Yeah, I'm busy. I would. Uh, I would. I got a bunch of shows and stuff, you know. <laughs> Oh, so. yeah. I mean, uh, Josh, well, I assumed it was a Friday night. I assumed you were booked. Yeah. So. <laughs> Wait, isn't this Friday when... Oh, no, it's Thursday. No. Isn't this Friday when we're all supposed to be doing Backs Against the Wall? No, that's... On, oh, that's a week from uh, then. And on a Wednesday. Yeah, that's on a Wednesday. <laughs> so, no. That's on a Wednesday. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was thinking it was the day before my uh, The Love's Company show, but it's the day before the Thursday Talk About It show. I'm being dumb. Oh, I'm okay. also on Will Doherty Loves Company, so come after that. Show. <laughs> <laughs> that's Sounds great. Check out Will. That's is that yeah. this Saturday. Yeah, come see the show that even I thought was that would have been too arrogant to to host. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to I wanted to do an interruption show so badly. I was like, you know what? I'm already kind of like an egotistical maniac. <laughs> if I do a show like that, people are going to be like, all right, too much. Right. And, uh, and that's the magic. The, of... Not Will. Will's <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm going to do it. That's the magic of Will Doherty. Like, yeah, 
all of the narcissism and arrogance is still there, but it's also tempered with an incredibly thick layer of self-loathing and hate. So it kind of balances out in <laughs> which, a weird way. Which is a brilliant character move on your part. Like, <laughs> I just, I just didn't want to stoop to that level. Yeah, it's all you know, a I just choice. <laughs> <laughs> that old uh, shtick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's, it, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I want you to respect the fact that I was born this way. Well, Dusty, thanks for uh, cutting into Ariel's airtime. You know what? You're more, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> come, uh, come see, come see Jimmy Putnam open for me this Friday at the Beachwood Lounge in Des Moines, everybody. Hells yeah. Bomb Shelter Comedy Showcase. All right. Thanks a lot. Dusty Stell, everybody. Yeah. I'll be in the van. All Later. right. Bye, bud. <laughs> All right. Ariel has been kind enough to agree to play us a song whenever you are ready. changed and three long years with you ran down the drain so i quietly packed up my things and hit the open road i was hoping by the morning I heard something that could or could not have been a mistake. It was not. Then <laughs> yeah. done and done. Yeah. That was fantastic. Thank I you. enjoyed that. Thank Thanks. you very much. You're welcome. You can take or leave whatever you want of that. So. Uh, I'm going to leave all of it, mistake and all. In fact, I'm going to put I'm going to put an air horn right when the mistake. <laughs> <happens>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I've. Since I've performed any of those songs, so that was kind of fun. Very cool. I'm glad you could do it. Should we do some news? Oh, yeah. All right, let's do that. Joshua. 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 Fossler. News. Hello, everybody. Human pumpkin and someone's weird uncle. Uh, <laughs> Donald Trump is in uh, some kind of hot water, I guess you could say. Uh, he... Uh, 
Donald Trump's reign atop the GOP presidential polls may soon come to an end after criticism of a U.S. senator and former presidential candidate, John McCain. John McCain, a war hero, five and a half years as a POW, and you call him a dummy. Is that appropriate in running for president? Okay, uh, let's, you got to let me speak, though, Frank, because you interrupt all the time, okay? He's he a hit war me. Hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war five hero. And a half years He's a, a war POW hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Do you He's agree with hero. that? He's a war hero because he was captured, okay? You can have, and I believe perhaps he's a war hero. After the statement, many are now criticizing Trump's own record of Vietnam era draft deferments, which there were five of. A 1968 medical deferment, which Trump says was for bone spurs in his heels, was described as a minor and short term issue, but it appears to have kept him out of the war during the crucial 18 months before he drew a high draft number in December 1969. So it's kind of coming back to bite him in the butt. And no, he's, go ahead. He's already kind of, you know, he made some statements about immigration and things like that, uh, which he gets a lot of heat for. But he was at the top of the polls, of the latest polls. So we'll see what happens. Now, Donald Trump is now a cartoon version of himself, right? Like, he's not, this isn't real. Like, he, like, I say the same thing about Donald Trump that I said about Shia LaBeouf last week, which is, this is, he's playing a caricature of himself for notoriety, right? Um, I don't know if he, I don't know if he's playing a character as much as this is just business. Like he's, he's, right. he's not going to win. He's not going to be a viable candidate. He doesn't believe that he's going to win the president. No, this is about selling books. This is about yeah. coming out, saying a lot of things and then being able to write a book and selling a lot of them and being said, you know, being able to say, Hey, I uh, I ran for president. What, am I hearing a whistling? What is that? That's Donald Trump's Twitter just blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> was that your cell phone, Will? I th it w I just as you know, I was a little bit late today because I had to go get a new cell phone because uh, Serenity's exploded. Uh, but I think that was my <laughs> old phone because I just realized I silenced the cell phone I just purchased. But I think that might have been my old cell phone. But I think now the battery's dead, so I think it's <laughs> over. This was weird. That's you know what new topic. In uh, other news, Will <laughs> Doherty ruins news segments. <laughs> Have you guys? Let me ask you guys a question. Speaking of that, sometimes we we shoot off on a tangent here, and we're just gonna go with it. Joshua Ariel, have you ever dropped and broken a cell phone? Uh, like shattered a screen once. Yeah. Like damaged it to the point where it needed replaced. No. Uh, not as an adult. I broke a pager once when I was younger. <laughs> uh, In I got the future. I, I broke a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got five phones on my two-year replacement plan at Best Buy from my last phone. So. Well, because I, I because I, I asked that because I've heard people have accused the modern smartphone design of being designed intentionally to make it hard to hold on to. So that people would drop them and break them and have to buy new phones. I've never broken a cell phone. I've never dropped one to the point where it would be damaged. And I don't like. You say you've lost. Did you say you've broken five? I think I. I think I got it replaced five times over the course of my replacement plan. <laughs> Will which just always has butter on. His I could have. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> AKA pizza grease. Yeah. I don't, I can't afford real butter, but some sort of <laughs> margarine like <laughs> substance. A uh, Florida toll collector has lost his job of almost 30 years after putting his own money up for a customer who hadn't paid enough. The 77 year old man, known for giving lollipops to kids and dog bones to dogs, says he was just balancing the register by a few bucks after undercharging a, a trailer. Dr a trailer driver last week, uh, which he did occasionally when uh, drivers were short. He uh, is quoted as saying, in my eyes, there was no crime committed. I just helped somebody out, he said. Uh, he said, I'd put uh, $6 in and I'd get the $6 back the next day. Uh, after being reprimanded before, he was finally fu uh, fired for it. Oh, okay. This is a d like that last thing changes. So now when the register was short... Is that what he he would cover it with his own money? Yeah. Then take it back the next day? No. 
what he would do when he I think what he meant by that is the next day when the person came through again would give him the money. Oh, uh, OK. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like, oh, well, no, he's just stealing, but he's hiding. Like, <laughs> no, no. His his register was balanced all the time, and if somebody was short, he would just cover to balance his register, and then the next day, whoever would just pay him back. Yeah. So what? So why did he get fired? Uh, it sounds like he works for assholes. Well, this is also one of those things where, okay, so I worked a cash register job. I was the assistant manager at a Walden Books, and I worked there for four years, and my register never was never once off by more than a dime, ever. This guy's, if his register is just off every shift, this might be a sign that he's incompetent in a lot of areas. This might be his version of the story. He really got fired because he's he, a disaster employee. He's always late. Like, you never but know. But it's after his... 30 years? Oh, is that what it said? I missed that part. It sounds like just your classic big corporation pushing out the old guys. The thing is, right. is his yeah. register wasn't off. That, <laughs> right. That his register was always correct. <laughs> no, but, no, but he got fired because he spotted somebody to make sure his register was correct. Right. It... But it was off a lot of those times because he fucked up. Like, some of the times it was because people couldn't pay, but other times it was because he screwed up and he was just covering for himself. Am I making this up? Am I angry at another person from my past and I'm reading that into the Here, story? Yeah. Oh, and he's a veteran. And you're mad. <laughs> he, yeah. uh, so, yes. So, I definitely hate him. Uh, I mean, he'd been in this job for 30 years, but he didn't necessarily need it. He's a retired military of right. 26 years and he just did it because of right. Was he captured? I don't know. Because yeah. he's not a hero. Not a hero. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're right, too. We were t I was just talking to Will last night. There are st about Will's boss, who uh, is angry at him for no reason. We were actually talking about uh, my the people at my workplace. Serenity is, um, she's been going to school in Michigan, but she's back for the summer, and she's delivering at the same pizza hut I work at over the summer. And when somebody has a problem, nobody ever talks to me about it. They only talk to her. And so the theory was, I think everybody who works at my Pizza Hut thinks I'm retarded. Oh, I was going to say, could people possibly think you're unapproachable? <laughs> I, I think so. Maybe? Oh, I don't know. Well, I, <laughs> no, what, I, I, Matt, what I told Will last night is that, like, Will does have this vibe sometimes of just right off the bat presenting himself as like, look. I am not going to do certain things here. <laughs> like, I told him, I told Will this story about one time I was talking to you, Josh, about this show. And I was like, dude, you got to, like, maybe make an effort, do some more work or whatever. And you were like, well, why don't you talk to Will about that stuff? And I was like, come on. Because, <laughs> like, when we first started this show, I think Will said directly to me, I really want to do this and be on the show, but I'm not going to do any work. And I was like, well, at least you're honest about it. And I was like, that, like, Pizza Hut could think of him that same way without him actually saying oh, it. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> Here's, yeah, I don't feel like, I haven't hidden the fact that, like, I make minimum wage working at Pizza Hut, and I've made no, uh, like, I've made, I've made no effort to hide the fact that I consider putting more than the least amount of effort it would take to not get fired them stealing from me. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, and you, you, you don't want to talk about what the specific issue was. I don't, rem I don't even remember. You, this, this conversation meant more to you than it did to me, apparently. Well, no, what, what got me was that the issue w that Serenity said that she was being chewed out for is that oh, you yeah. and her were switching shifts. We're switching shifts, shifts yeah. Because she has another part-time job that she has to schedule around, and I have comedy stuff that always is changing up. And so, since she was there, yeah, like, yeah, we're always just back and forth all the time. But all the shifts were always covered. Yeah. But your boss was irritated that you and her kept switching shifts, and her reason was not everyone has a spouse that they can always switch <laughs> shifts with. So which it's not. A, it's a, it was a question of fairness, which is a whole. It's just a question of a person who's an idiot being mad for no reason. And my, I don't know Will's boss, and I might be getting Will in trouble here. But I'm assuming she doesn't listen to the show. No, yeah, me too. Uh, but if she, I guess I we'll find does. out. I really hope she does. <laughs> we should have her on. Yeah. <laughs> we can settle this. Uh, I'm just gonna play this clip for her. <laughs> Jimmy, 
great mediator. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, if there's one thing I do, it's calm people down in the rile. <laughs> easygoing guy. <laughs> I am. Like, I hardly ever, you know. Complain. That's right. No, I, I don't like to complain about stuff. I usually just let things roll off my back. I mean, he brags that he doesn't have uh, high blood pressure, but everybody around him does. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the law of conservation of blood pressure. You guys not know that? <laughs> My resting your, heart rate while I've been here is 108. <laughs> your your spirit animal is a sloth on quaaludes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. So, uh, let's see. We've gotten Will fired. Uh, Donald Trump's an idiot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Will can't hold on to his cell phone. Wow, we're really hard on Will today. He'll Sorry, right. buddy. He'll be all right. Black and blue, man. <laughs> 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 what do you want to do next? We can. I got one more story. We can do sounds of the internet. What do you want to do? Let's do sounds of the internet. Sounds of the internet. Okay, so tell us what this is. Well, I found this on the uh, the interweb, and it, apparently this guy. I don't know what country he's from. German. <laughs> right. I don't know. Some some foreign. Whatever country, country has Germans. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh, he designed a roller coaster. Uh, that also induces euthanasia. <laughs> it's the most, that's it, the most, like, it, evil. It's a roller engine. coaster that kills you, and he describes it. It's great. It's called the euthanasia coaster. <laughs> yeah, the euthanasia. Uh, really? really? Uh, from Lithuania. Uh, Lithuania. And this piece is called the uh, euthanasia coaster. It's a basically, it's a euthanasia machine in the form of roller coaster. Engineered to humanely with euphoria and pleasure kill a human being. It features <laughs> if, <laughs> only if you like roller coasters though. <laughs> this that this is the craziest I oh man, we need to search this guy's basement immediately. Right. Like immediately. Like if if you think it's kind of kind of creepy that this that he designed this and then you hear his voice. It all yeah. just kind of comes yeah. together. And he's a very pale, skinny, you know, white guy. Oh, yeah. In, in a blazer that doesn't fit. Just like super, yeah. Yeah, if you saw this guy as a character, as the villain in a James Bond movie, you'd be like, that's too cartoonish. And the thing is, it, it shows the roller coaster. And I'll try and describe it for listeners. But it's like, it's kind of starts off as kind of a tr- more traditional yeah. roller coaster. Which go has the steep incline, right? Real steep incline, real steep down, climb. <laughs> <laughs> then brick wall. <laughs> Boom, nailed it. And then just really fast, a series of uh, decreasing in size, a series of loops. Yeah, it's the. It looked like it's the centripetal force that actually kills you. Right. Right. It's yeah. not like there's no. It's not like you're on a roller coaster and then like a needle pops out and jabs you or something like that. Like it's, well, I, yeah, I assume you just pass out. Right. Yeah. From the G's, <laughs> they call it. That means G force. Not a bunch of gangsters. Which G force? Uh, <laughs> right. I don't know what the G and G f- gravity. gravitate gravity <laughs> Gravi- <laughs> gravitational force. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gravitational acceleration. Okay, yeah. You see, that. you see, Joss, uh, one G represents uh, the normal force of Earth's gravity. So when someone says something is seven Gs, that means it's seven times stronger than Earth's gravitational force. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this invention is amazing. And the guy who invented it, like, I want to know what else he's invented, what else he's designed, you know, because this guy was like, what like you ha- you can't have done this without like what is the most ludicrous way I can kill? Yeah. I love your Lithuanian. Oh yeah. He also invented the skin robe in Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> That's right. What is the most ridiculous way to keep warm and still kill people? Yeah. I keep thinking about taglines though for what this roller coaster would be. Like oh, the yeah, name like the, of it. The, like to advertise yeah. it. Yeah. Like I don't know. Come see the euthanasia coaster. Right of your life. Can, okay. Right of your life. Yeah. I, I I feel like there was a real missed opportunity because he like was describing was like this is a roller coaster that kills people. It is called euthanasia coaster. <laughs> <Right>. Like <laughs> you could have gone like yeah. silly or like punny. <laughs> right. Like I thought it was like 
Like, you hop on the suicide cycle. Like, <laughs> right. Where was he presenting this? Because it sounds like a science fair or something. <laughs> it it, it kind of looked like that. Yeah, I it was like a museum or something. Yeah, the people okay. were looking at it, checking it's it like out. It's like a sixth grade science fair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a euthanasia cluster. <laughs> and you could charge a lot. I bet you people would pay a lot because they don't care. To die to on that on thing? It? Yeah. Like, let's say... You love roller coasters, right? I, I guess I wasn't I even do. thinking of this as a suicide machine. That's exactly what it is, right? I was thinking of it as like a way to so execute what if, criminals. Let's say, let's say you have... Oh, like, no. <laughs> no, we're not giving them the benefit of the coaster? Are you kidding me? Well, his, he said it's more humane, so that's what made me think of that. Well, what if you had like terminal cancer and you've got... Right, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, no, that's, that's he's what, saying that's what I think made, everyone, yeah. everyone but me made that connection. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, how are we killing the criminally insane? But, right. No. <laughs> Well, uh, that's, th- that's a hot topic now, though, isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. assisted, assisted... I mean, assisted. yeah, ever since yeah. the last escape at over at Arkham Asylum, people have really... <laughs> it's Batman. It's Batman. Don't thing. worry about <laughs> it, Josh. <laughs> <a> reference. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, it, it's a really cool thing if you want to kill yourself if you love roller coasters. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and if I love roller coasters and I wanted to kill myself and that's the way I wanted to go, I, you know, I'd spend a lot of money on that because uh, I don't really care. I'm going to die. Yeah, I mean, you can't take it with you. Right. Might as well spend it. Assuming I have no loved ones to give it to. <laughs> Couldn't right. you just, like, ride a r- regular roller coaster without being strapped down? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's true. I was, <laughs> like, a world of fun. <laughs> I, was kind of, all euthanasia I was kind of wondering if at the start of this roller coaster, there was, like, that big list of rules. Yeah. That you had, like, <laughs> right, keep like, your arms inside the car. Like, the mama is do about not to Stand on this roller coaster. <laughs> I cannot emphasize that enough. And what? And what? Where are you going to put this roller coaster? Like it's the new attraction at Six Flags, yeah. <laughs> right? That's like you can't do that. I'm Six of, Flags over Transylvania. Yeah. I, I'm thinking of like every other ride at a carnival or like at Worlds of Fun that could like potentially be redesigned to just murder you. <laughs> like there's like that 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 giant slingshot thing, and you just you know. You just you just extend the bungee cords by about six feet, so just oh, and then just the impact, like right back. What if to it's the not even a ride? You know, you go to the carnivals and they got the ducks you turn over, and it has a number, and you get to pick. What if instead you you pick up the duck and you look underneath, and it has a pill, and then you take the pill <laughs> off, and then you, you just take the pill, or just like knockout gas comes out of it. Right. <laughs> if you like ducks, that's a good. Idea. <laughs> that's right. We've created the actual carnival of death. Yeah, yeah it needs its own theme park. I, I I would throw ten bucks into that Kickstarter for <laughs> <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> yeah. How do you like keep it hidden until it's unveiled? Like <laughs> right. we see that roller coaster in your backyard, man. <laughs> I like it. it's just like a gorilla g- roller coaster building enterprise, yeah. <laughs> or he's not telling anybody he builds it anyway. Oh yeah, he's going to be the Banksy of roller coasters. <laughs> Oh man! I mean, what if they? What if you go on that, and you don't? You end up not dying. Well, at the very least, you get your money back. Yeah, then I guess it's just awesome. There's just the guy at the end of the ride with a gun, and he's just like, (laughs) 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 "This did not work." No, he goes, "Oops." (laughs) No, then they find out who's the chosen one. (laughs) You have survived the trial of the coaster. Uh, the 37 million members of a infidelity hookup site called Ashley Madison are going to have a very bad day unless the site is taken offline permanently. Hackers say they've compromised the entire database of the company who owns and operates the site. The chief executive has confirmed that uh, the site has been hacked and says that the company is working diligently and feverishly to take down files that the hackers have already posted online. In a manifesto, the hackers uh, say the information uh, they will release includes secret sexual fantasies as well as names and credit card details. Ashley Madison is still online for now. Mary, don't go on the internet for a couple weeks! <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a profile on Ashley Madison. Me neither. Anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who, I, this is nothing but hilarious to me. Really? It's that, shitty things happening to I'm shitty kidding. people. Uh, my, my wife just walked in the room. Uh, a, an adultery website, Ashley Madison, just got hacked. So everybody who has a profile is... Okay. 
She made a yap, yap, yap sign and left. She looked, <laughs> she looked pissed. No. And I don't think it was anything to do with the story. I think you forgot to do something. Or... Uh, she was playing Fallout and had to pause uh, her game and run and come down here. That'll do it. That'll do it. And then she had to run back upstairs and try to delete her Ashley Madison profile. <laughs> 37 million members. Now, like, wow. that's definitely an invasion of privacy. Yes. Do you care? No. No? Because mm. I'm with you. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, I mean, like. Uh. Whatever. Put in, them all on the coaster. I don't care. I mean, <laughs> I guess I care in the sense that uh, the members of the site uh, wanted a service provided with uh, discreetly and that is not happening now. Who, this is the you, same, this is the same thing. It's the same question as every moral issue which is everybody has a right to privacy but really i don't believe that everyone has a right to cheat on their spouse in secret like i don't or maybe they do i just don't care about that you know like yeah. it, there's two issues like well, yeah you you should have a right to have your you know your privacy protected i, I guess i to me the issue it's a little bit different than that because to me the issue whether or not the amount of entertainment value I'm willing to take from this story, that's not my moral question. My moral question is, what was the motivation of the people who were hacking into their website? Oh, like, I just assumed it was... Was it just people... I think it's like blackmail. Was it... Yeah, well, yeah, but like if it was just people like stealing credit card numbers, I'm like, that's shitty. I hope people don't do that. But if it's just like a random hacker group who's like, huh, we can take down this website and fuck up the lives of a bunch of people what was trying to cheat on their spouse. Yeah, that's what I assumed it hilarious. was. Hilarious. Yeah. See, that's what Amazing. I assumed it was. But it could but it could very easily also just be like, well, here's another website that we can crack and steal yeah. 10 million credit card numbers I hope at it's once. just like a group of scorned. Yeah, I hope it's anonymous. Well, I hope it's anonymous, just, and they yeah. were like, "Did it for the lulls." Well, most yeah. most that's what most hacker groups are today. Is they're just general chaos, like fucking around and stuff right. like that. Which yeah, it's funny because like uh, a couple Super Bowl or a couple uh, bowl games ago, they used to they tried to get a sponsorship to sponsor a bowl game. It was going to be the <laughs> Ashley Madison Bowl, and nice. they couldn't. They couldn't get it. They, nobody would. They couldn't find a stadium to sign up. I heard an interview with the guy who owns that website, who founded it, and mm -hmm. he, and it, it was. He, he oh, his man. last name's Beaterman. It's so. <laughs> it's so weird to listen to him talk about it because he's just like, "What's the problem?" You know, like he yeah. doesn't. He literally doesn't see any moral issue with running a site that is designed for people to cheat on their significant others. Now, I, I don't know. Like, I'm certainly not the moral authority. I, 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 I'm, this doesn't affect me at all that I know of, but <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming it doesn't. And it, I don't think it affects anyone I do know, but like, I don't feel sympathy for people who are cheating and get caught. Like, for sure. I don't feel any sympathy. But I've had, but I've had people who are like, who, if they, if some, if they get caught cheating, they're mad at the person who told on them. Here's like, there's, there's, there's a different perspective though. Cause I, I can, it's, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say sympathetic, but I can kind of understand the little difference in perspective from people who aren't me. Cause like, yeah, it's really easy for me to go like, don't cheat on your wife. But if people were trying to fuck me all the time, <laughs> right. it would be a little bit of a different perspective. Yeah. That's like a euthanasia coaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. The, one of the analogies I heard is like, most people I know don't go around bashing out windows and stealing car stereos. But also, most people I know, if they see a bag of money laying on the side of the road, will pick it up. And like, that's... You know, it, it, it's the analogy is like cheating yeah. is only as morally objectionable as it is hard for you to do. Yeah, but it's yeah. also it's it's what's morally irre irreprehensible to you. The, right. I mean, I'm not saying I, I think cheating's good or anything like that. But, you know, some people can make the same argument that if they subscribe to like Pornhub or something like that and it got hacked into and, you know, they were going to distribute credit cards and stuff like that. You know, one person might say, well, that's totally fine because I think porn is, you know, morally, you know, corrupt and everything like that. Josh, Pornhub you know, is free. Where's the line, though? 
Uh, you can subscribe. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> There's, I've never they, they offer a variety of four pay services. Yeah. <laughs> Or, it, it was just an example. It was just an <laughs> this example. This conversation makes me look good and bad. <laughs> no, no, I've made. I've no, made I just a... get the free stuff. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I'm not some fucking degenerate who pays for his porn. <laughs> oh no, yeah, no. You have to be a degenerate. Uh, but I, I'd like to point out, you know, I've made a nice little side business doing some the occasional cam show. You know. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> have you? Never mind. That should be a crime. Now I'm picturing it. <laughs> yeah, you you for sure should have. Well, I mean, if somebody hacked into like Will's bank account information, I mean, that's not really a crime. You know, that's like they would be like, "What a waste of time!" It's like breaking into a desert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trespassing in an empty field. Stealing sand. Stealing sand, if, yeah. If, if you mean a desert comprised entirely of McDonald's receipts, <laughs> then yes. <laughs> right. That feels like a good place to wrap this up. We got lots of content on this show. Does anybody else have anything they really wanted to get to? Will you please play the Jeopardy clips? Because Will hasn't heard them, and I love them. Okay, yeah. I think they're great. Rainy songs for four. She sang, now that it's raining more than ever, you can stand under my umbrella, Ella, Ella, eh, eh, eh. Now? It was Rihanna? Yes. <laughs> See, you find that way more amusing than I do. <laughs> I don't think he's ever heard the song. He's just reading it. Well, yeah. Yeah. What is Hogan? Hogan, you got it. TV for 800? In the theme to this 90s sitcom, I pulled up to the house about 7 or 8, and I yelled to the cabbie, Yo, Holmes, smell you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one's great. Yeah. He's like, the other, during the Rihanna song, he wasn't know, trying to yeah. actually sing it. But in that one, like... I felt that, like it was an Edgar Allan Poe poem that he was reciting. <laughs> that seemed to be his version of what rap is. Like, hey, here, we're gonna go to a thing. <laughs> Yo, Holmes, I'll smell you later. Like, that was his, his version of rap was like a George Bush impression. His version of rap is, uh, like, the spoken word version of, like, Shatner. Like, Shatner doing yeah, spoken word in songs. It was. It was. I it's just the, pulled up to the... <laughs> <laughs> it was the... Like, that was his, like, cool guy voice. <laughs> <laughs> rap is something that cool guys do. <laughs> This is the voice I use when I'm relating to my nephew. <laughs> That's right. That like that that phrase ended with "Daddy O." <laughs> okay, I'm glad we did that, Joshua. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, so if you want to catch us out of our on-air personas, where can you see us? Let's do some plugs. What do we have coming up? Oh, I'm gonna be in Des Moines. This Friday? So you can catch me on that. I believe it was the Beachwood Lounge. It's your plug. Catch me there, and then I'll be on uh, David Kalsgaard's Backs Against the Wall show on Wednesday, June 29th at, at the Broadway Bar in Council Bluffs, Iowa. I'll be on Joke and Dagger at the Lookout Lounge on Thursday, June 30th. And I will be doing the Fantasy Nerd Roast, also with the Lookout Lounge, on August 1st, which is a Saturday. Catch me at any and all of those shows. Joshua? Uh, I will be giving uh, Dusty and Jimmy a ride to Des Moines on the 24th. <laughs> um, you can see me there. I will also be at uh, the Backs Against the Wall show on the 29th with you, Jimmy. Absolutely. And Will, are you on that show? Uh, yeah. All right. Trifecta. Boom. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> um, I'm going to be running my uh, monthly interruption comedy show, Will Doherty Loves Company, on Saturday the 25th at the Backline. Cool. Which is a real fun, real fun show, because I get to be on stage the whole time, and I'm a bigger narcissist than Dusty Sell. <laughs> so. Yeah, Dusty Sell's on that show, right? He is. That guy isn't funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That oh, was mean. We, you know what? I'm going to throw this plug out there just because you just threw the clip in. Uh, you can you can catch Abby Rosenquist at the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival this year. Uh, I don't know what that is, but I saw it looked like a big deal in Montreal. It, yeah, it's a big deal. It's cool. not it's not the That's big awesome. deal that it used to it be, is. but like a, like years ago, that used to be like, oh, I got on this once, and then a Hollywood guy gave me a contract, and now I'm famous. Nice. That don't happen so much anymore, but it's still it's a pretty big. 
pretty big thing. So good for her. She's awesome and she deserves it. Yeah, throwing throwing some Hell congrats yeah, out. A. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, our very own guest Ariel Sinna, <laughs> and as well as other friends of the show, Annie Hildebrand and Abby Rosenquist uh, has also been on the show. We're in a comedy troupe. Yeah, group. Yeah, conglomerative. Trio. Yeah, work together. Trio. That was awesome. Those were the days. <laughs> and I would like to say I'm I'm happy to say uh, when Abby Rosenquist was on this podcast, uh, I did personally make her promise to rescue us when she got famous. So <laughs> fingers crossed. This is, these are my other favorite Abby drops. What's your face doing? Is that a facial tick? <laughs> Do you happen to know the Bernoulli equation? Well, I don't know why I love those. <laughs> <laughs> or isn't one like fuck you? I just did comedy. Oh yeah. Go fuck yourself. I just did comedy. Yeah. Oh, that's one that, that one's my favorite. Uh, Ariel, what do you have coming up? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm headed to the big city, North Platte, tomorrow. Boom. To, for the Here Nebraska tour with Jungle Cat. Uh, Friday, you can catch us at Hullabaloo Music Fest out at Soul Cold Park. Yeah. Ooh, these Nebraska Fests. You can catch me most Thursdays <laughs> and Fridays at the back line. Do you have a, like a website where we can go hear Ferocious Jungle Cat news or Facebook or Face- where, we, where Facebook, we find Facebook. Uh, we're on everything. Tinder, Farmers Only, aferociousjunglecat.com <laughs> nice. is, the, is the hub. Yeah. So you can you can date Ferocious Jungle Cat online. All of us Ex- at once. Exciting. Yeah. Most sites, they had to delete their Ashley Madison profile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Cool. Yeah. You can see Ariel doing improv and music somewhere just about every week. Yes. That sounds like you're doing a lot, but... I'm going to have to agree with Jimmy. (laughs) Not working hard enough. (laughs) You can also catch me at my day job, 8 to 5. Oh, don't. Not enough. Don't show up there or send her things there. (laughs) That's been tried and it went poorly. Do you know that story? Oh, yeah. We shouldn't talk about it prior, oh, right? Or should we? Come on. You can if you want. It's totally about you. Please talk about Ariel, it. Ariel had a stalker. Yeah. Awesome. Tell me about like, that. It, 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 <laughs> got, it got pretty weird. Oh, like, no man. Shit. I bet that was so validating. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a guy. I mean, I, do you want to, you want me to tell the story? Do you want to talk about it? Do you, not. Or go ahead. We, I'll is, jump in. Should we you're... kill it? Is it all gone? No. No. No, it's ongoing. Oh. Uh. There's a guy who you, who did comedy who started stalking Ariel and, like, sending her things at work and, like, showing up to, like, shows and being weird yeah. and... Do I know this person? Like, I like, don't think so. Probably not. Oh, okay. But, like, like, acted as though they had a relationship that they didn't yeah. have. Like, real, actual stalker stuff. Like, he didn't seem to be a violent guy, but it was unsettling for sure. Yeah. And he ended up having to be banned from a lot of like comedy mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got super weird. Like he sent, he would send stuff to my work under a different name. And then, so I'd like call the florist and ask, you know, who, and she'd be like, yeah, I thought it was weird that he signed his name as John when really <laughs> his name is, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so super weird. Uh, he would send me like texts and Facebook messages. He would invent like Twitter accounts to talk. It was yeah. So you met him through comedy? Yeah, and so he would like the first time he asked me, he was like asked me for my phone number casually, and I said no, but I didn't think much of it because whatever that happens. And then like the next like two or three times later that he would ask, it got to a point where I was like, listen, I said no, you don't, please do not ask me again. And then he got my phone number from some like backline contact list and would hit me up and yeah, make fake fake Facebook profiles for like him or his family members and yeah, it was Once again, here are all the places you can find Ariel this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although if you're this guy, stay away. <laughs> no, I've gotten well, because I've had other, you know, people who put me on shows before say like, Hey, you why aren't you promoting the show on, on your social? Yeah. That's why, because I don't want everyone to know where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. Not everyone, specifically this one person. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah, no, that's very unsettling. So, uh, scary situation. It's but, the real uh, deal. And what's scarier is, like, how hard it is to get, like, a harassment order on somebody if they haven't threatened you physically. Right. He's a very, like, quiet, passive guy. I mean, those are the types, right? But, like, it's not someone that you... 
that would make like a cop go, oh yeah, we got to right. get involved Well, and in that's this. why like there's nothing I can do about it. Right. I, there's so many hoops you have to jump through to get any kind of protection from that. Right. Yeah. But there has to be some sort of kind of threat or feel, you know, like you have to be able to justify some, and if he's just a creepy dude that just follows you around. It'd be different if you had a relationship with him already too. I think it's easier to get a protection order if you've. So maybe you should go out with him and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then break up Jesus with him Christ. and then you could get a protection order yeah. against him easier, you know? What I mean? You should I'm just try to help you. Out. Yeah, just let him murder you once <laughs> yeah. and then <laughs> and that'd be super easy. Yeah. yeah. Invite him on a ro- a new roller coaster yeah. you heard about. It'd <laughs> be romantic. Then you don't show up. It's the euthanasia coaster. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that feels like a good way to end the show. <laughs> 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 Yeah, no, I mean, no, this is just one of those classic grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> it's such a, it's such a weird classic. thing. Classic. I'm never, I'm never going to have a stalker. Right. Yeah, that's right? the thing. Like, that's the thing. Like, I, I can see, you know, I try and put myself in other people's position. I feel like if I was a female and there was a creepy dude, like, bothering me all the time, that would really bother me. And that, that's a big problem. But as a guy, like. I don't think I'd have that big of a problem with it. I'd be like, somebody really likes me. And that, that doesn't happen very often. It is scary when someone thinks you have a relationship that you don't have. Mm-hmm. You know, local comedian Oliver, what's his name, <laughs> did that to me at a show where he was on stage talking oh, yeah. about me like we were friends. He's done that to me too. And then had a falling out. It fucking freaked me the fuck out. Yeah. Like I was like, we we don't have that relationship. Yeah, I remember somebody did that to Annie too, where they were like, we dated, and they said that in a set, and she was like, I don't even know this person. Yeah, yeah, it's so weird. weird. It is weird, and bad things happen. Like people are, and I think anytime you're just talking to someone who's clearly delusional is scary. It is. What well, planet are they? Okay. On? Every person who's doing comedy in Nebraska is clearly delusional okay. in one way or another. <laughs> yeah, different kind of delusion. Right. Some of them get on the Montreal comedy <laughs> extravaganza, though, so, so there's a method to the madness. Yeah. You just no. have to avoid all of the fucking creepy landmines along the way. <laughs> <laughs> just try and survive long enough to get out of here, right? Well, we're really selling our scene. <laughs> 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 Let's all go to an open mic. All right. Can you please turn Will Always Has Butter on His Hands into a drop? I like that. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> we need more, like, Josh. Like, I don't have a lot of uh, yeah. Joshua drops. Like, I've got this one. Uh... Too bad for Josh. <laughs> That's, That's, not, too... That's not even me. No, it's not you saying it, but it's but about it's, you. It's about me. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, uh, anyways, we'll think of some. In the meantime, thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you. Thanks thank- so much for having me. And thank you for being on the show. It was a pleasure. Uh, it was super fun. Thanks for playing a song, man. Yeah. That was a Jimmy Curve first, and I loved it. I loved cool. how that went. Well, for the record, that was one take, so the mess up was – it's it's easy to just mess up. He's oh. going to put an air horn in. Yeah, they'll hear the air horn. <laughs> it'll, it'll be there. Uh, and uh, I'm going to leave everyone with a song by Ariel's band, A Ferocious Jungle Cat. It's called Demons. Yeah. Uh, it is kick-ass song, so stick around for that at the end of the show. So – for co-host Joshua Vossler. Stalk me on Snapchat, uh, Jay Vossler. <laughs> uh, sidekick Will Doherty. Submissions for catchphrases are still open, so send them uh, along with any photos to my Facebook. Or on Twitter, at, at Kill, Kill Doherty. Doherty. <laughs> <laughs> and our extra special guest and my dear Dear friend. <laughs> Isn't it so weird when somebody has a relationship with you yeah. that you don't have with them? And- <laughs> Her name is Ariel Senna. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I have been your host, Jimmy Putnam. Thank you and good night.
trouble that I'm causing. Salami.